Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today, I will be welcoming one of the great character actors of his generation, one of the most underrated character actors, and one of the most talented, Art LaFleury. A lot of you nerds out there who love horror and sci-fi know him from such classics as Trancers, uh, Zone Troopers, and the 1988 remake of The Blob, but he's also had a huge career in other things. He was in Cobra, um, he was in Field of Dreams, um, Sandlot, lots of baseball stuff he's done in his, in his life and stuff. I'm going to ask him about that if he ever played baseball, because he's done a lot of baseball stuff. And I'm having him on the show today to talk about all those rules and stuff. And I can't wait. Like I said, he is one of the absolute great character actors. And he even teaches acting, too, which I'm also going to ask him about. So, uh, yeah, here is my interview with Art LaFleury. Tommy. Oh, hey, Art. How are you? I'm good, man. How are you? I am spectacular. I, I thought you were going to call me. Oh, sh- I didn't know your number. <laughs> You didn't know my number, okay. Yeah, <laughs> but here we are now, though. It's uh, hey. such an honor. Um, thank you for taking the time today, sir. I think you're one of the most underrated character actors of all time. Thank you. That's very nice of you to say that. Yes, absolutely. So, going back in time, did you gravitate toward acting early on? Well, no, I didn't. Um, I was... Uh in the saloon business and I was in Chicago. I was in the saloon business and I was in uh, sales and uh, lots of different things. And then when I so when I turned 32, I moved from Chicago to Gary to um, uh, Hollywood. Mm-hmm. And um, that's what got me here. I came out to be a writer. Mm-hmm. And I thought that uh, I don't know. I thought I thought that uh, I would uh, give that a try. And uh, my friend, uh, I called my friend. Uh, the only guy that I knew out here was Jonathan Banks. And I called yeah. him up and I said, "Jonathan, I'm here, man." And he goes, uh, "All right, how are you?" Um, What's going on? Uh, what, what what brought you out of here? And I said, well, I came, came out to be a writer. He goes, you know shit about writing. <laughs> I said, well, I know. He goes, well, get into an acting class uh, that I've just started. And so I got into an acting class, and um, I did a play with him first. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, uh, in the Jan- I moved out in June, and, I, and in January of that, of that, uh, or December of that same year, 1975, I started rehearsing and, uh, you know, performing in this play. Mm-hmm. And uh, I uh, was, mm, I was, um, I was, uh, it was, uh, the play was, uh, One Foot of the Cougar's Nest. Oh, yeah. And I, um, I, uh, started that play and the, the acting teacher that he was studying with came to see me and, uh, and said some nice things to me. And so I started his class in like February of uh, 76. Mm. And um, that's that's how I started. Wow. That sounds like a very typical Jonathan Bakes response. Very droll. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. Who did you play in One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest? I, play, I played Ruckley, the, uh, the guy that just said, just stood there and said, Fuck them all. Oh, that's probably one of the characters that was in the book. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily. 
and, and that's the, that's the character I played. I, I had one line that was, f -f 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 fuck them all. <laughs> yeah. I, I so he, he was the guy that played the basketball, the, the basketball hoop. Yeah. Guy. I know exactly who you're talking about. I, yeah. I, I've read the book. Yeah. yeah. Now, you're originally from Indiana. Yeah, I am originally from Gary, Indiana. Uh, they had a very nice tribute for me uh, this coming, uh, this past uh, June. I went out there and uh, uh, he, they, um, they gave me a, uh, a bobblehead mm -hmm. and they had the real cats of, uh, they had the guy who was the marketing director for the real cats, the Gary real cats. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was a baseball, a minor league baseball team. And, uh, he gave me, um, the, uh, the bobblehead and all that. So let me throw out the first pitch. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they had Art LaFleur day. Wow. That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah, it, was really, it was really nice. Wow. Indiana, that's such a contradiction because you're really good at playing like New York tough guys. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I am. <laughs> Your first role, I remember so well because I saw it a million times as a kid. Uh, Rescue from Gilligan's Island. Rescue from Gilligan's Island. That's right. That was the very first thing that I ever did. I, I met my wife there uh, doing that doing that uh, TV movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was that just a standard audition? It was a standard audition, but I knew the, um, I knew the, uh, producer of that show and he invited me to read for Ivan, the Russian spy. And that's who I read for. And, uh, I got the part. He gave me the part. That was in 1978. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was reading that was one of the most viewed TV movies of all time, and it fell into the public domain. Oh, wow. Yeah. And Sherwood Schwartz, he had funded the movie with his own money. Did you see him uh, clash with any of the producers or executives during the filming? I, I didn't see him clash with anybody. Uh, I, 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 I saw him a couple times during the, the shoot, and that was, uh, I worked about four or five weeks out on that, and that was it. Uh, Lloyd, his son, mm -hmm. was the guy that I that I knew, the producer that I knew, because uh, he was dating a, a somebody in my acting class. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, I, I love how you and Vincent Chiavelli, you both are always incognito, and Gilligan is too stupid to realize you're both the same two guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that must have been a lot of fun, and you know, because the show had become iconic by that point. It was a, a lot of fun, and I had a great time doing it. Mm hmm And then uh, Sherwood Schwartz later casted you again in The Invisible Woman. Yeah. Which also had Jonathan Banks in that. You guys must have had fun mm -hmm. on that one. Yeah, Jonathan Banks uh, was a very good friend of mine at the time. And uh, it became closer and closer, and uh, he, that was it. Mm -hmm. You still talk to uh, uh, Sherwood's family? I, I, I still talk this to, to um, Lloyd occasionally um, uh, and his uh, wife, Barbara, who was uh, in my acting class at the time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. I still talk to him, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, re I remember when you were the uh, gangster thug in City Heat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you had to do a fight scene with Burt Reynolds. What was he like to work with? Burt Reynolds was great. Um, he was very, very nice to me and uh, very cooperative. Uh, and uh, uh, it was a funny thing because at one point, I was supposed to jump onto a ramp mm -hmm. and jump up. Uh, he was supposed to turn me around and put me up against the wall, high on the wall. Mm -hmm. And uh, what? And I was supposed to slide down the wall like I was dazed. And um, I stuck 
in the wall. Uh, they, 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 he placed me right between two what that turned out to be two um, joists, two uh, uh, what, do you, what do you call it? The uh, you know the two by fours that go up and down. Oh, um, the, the bars. Yeah, he told he told me he put me between, between two of those, and uh, I uh, I stuck in the wall. And I couldn't slide down because I, I off camera I saw the director saying slide down, slide down, yeah. and I, I I couldn't do it. So he uh, he finally said cut, and I built myself out of the wall. And uh, he said okay, so they reinforced the wall, uh, and uh, I shot it again. Mm-hmm. That time I that time it worked. Yeah, and had Bert already broken his jaw by that point? I'm I, I'm not sure when he broke his jaw, but he certainly didn't break it on on our on our show. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good. Yeah, because I think it was during the uh, sequence where he's wearing the uh, the wolf costume is when he broke his jaw. Oh yeah. Yeah. Where, where, where was he working? What what show was he working? In? On that, was it? it, it it's, it's City Heat. Um, he's wearing the wolf costume uh, at the end, um, you know, interrupting the card game when they're, he's trying to, he's trying to get uh, Madeline Kahn back. And some guy hit him with a chair. It was supposed to be a breakaway chair, but it, it wasn't, and it, it broke his jaw. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. I didn't even know that. Oh, yeah. And it, was, it was in the news, and there was a rumor going around that he had AIDS because he got so thin from it and all that stuff. Yeah, it was pretty bad. And uh, oh, I remember that. Yeah, it was pretty bad though. Uh, Clint Eastwood good to work with. Clint Eastwood was great to work with. I worked with him a couple more times. Um, I worked with him once before on uh, a movie, uh, any which way you can. Mm-hmm. And uh, I played a just a just a, a guy uh, taking suitcases out of a out of an airplane. And uh, and then I did that say he, and uh, that's where I first that's where I first met him, and uh, he was very nice to me. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good. He's yeah, because he's a huge star, you know. And sometimes those huge stars aren't very nice. Yeah, they, uh, exactly. But <laughs> he was very nice, and so was Burt Reynolds, by the way. Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah. Then you did one of my all-time favorites uh, from the Charlie Band Camp, Trancers. Trancers, I did that. I, I did that early on. Uh, I did tra- I did Trancers in like uh, 1983, and then in '84, I went over to Italy to do um, to do uh, Zone Troopers. Zone Troopers, right? Right. And I really I really enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. It was a lot of fun. Right, I'm going to ask you about Zone Troopers, but I was curious to know, though, on Trancers, um, did you re- read the script and think, wow, this is so out there? Uh, I, I, th- I read it and I thought, man, this, is, this has got to be, it's got to be good. Mm-hmm. So um, that's why I, I did it. And, uh, of course, Tim Thomerson and Helen Hunt were, part of the uh, cast mm-hmm. and uh, they were the two leads and uh, so I, I had a chance to work with them finally and because uh, Helen was in my acting class mm-hmm. and uh, so they were great and Thelma Hopkins how great was she? she 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 was really she was really nice too mm-hmm. um, very very nice you played um, yeah you played McNulty again in the second one in uh, Pulse Pounders. Is he a favorite character of yours? Well, he's not. He's not a favorite <laughs> character of mine. I did it the first time I did it. Um, they, this, 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 when they did number two, mm-hmm. they they called me and asked me if I'd do it. And I said, "Yeah." And they said, "Well, we can't pay you what we paid you before." And mm-hmm. what they paid me before was basically peanuts. Yeah. And so I said to them, well, 
go ahead. They said if we can't, if we if we can't, if you if you don't want to do it, uh, we understand. Uh, but we but we're it's going to move on and hire somebody else and I, to do the same part. I said, well, okay, go ahead and do that. And so about a few days later, they called me and they came up came up with the the, the extra money for. Uh, and I was only getting paid a couple of thousand dollars mm-hmm. anyway, so it wasn't any big deal. And um, so I went back over to Italy in 1987 and did it. Wow. And it was great. Wow. And then uh, the Zone Troopers experience, you said you had a great time on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, I play, I play a GI... In 1944, lost, you know, he was a, he was lost in with a uh, a few other guys in his squad, and uh, we they, we come across a crashed spaceship, and that's why I thought it would be you know a lot of fun to do it. Mm-hmm. Aside from the fact that I that I played army all the time when I was a kid. And uh, so then here I had a chance to to play a, a, in, in a movie where I was actually a, a GI in 1944, and my gun went off um, properly, and uh, so that was it. How long was the shoot? The shoot was about um, seven weeks. About seven weeks. Like that, yeah. And then Danny Bilson directed, I had him on the podcast last year. Great guy. You know, yeah, great guy. And, and I, I I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, he's got a very thorough knowledge of uh, the filmmaking process. Yeah. Was it, was Tim Thomerson, like, always cracking everybody up? Tim Thomerson was, uh, was very funny, uh, and so was Biff Maynard. Oh yeah, was uh, who played the uh, the war correspondent. He he was really great, and uh, Timmy Van Patten. He and I laughed a lot. Oh yeah, Joe, as you can imagine, yeah. That too, Timothy Van Patten's a funny guy too. Yeah, well, well, Timmy was a Timmy was he appreciated a good joke when he saw one. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Did you like working with Stallone on Cobra? I like working with Solon and Cobra a lot. Um, he was very nice to me also. And, uh, you know, they were all very nice to me. <laughs> Maybe because I was intimidating. I don't know. But uh, they were all very nice to me. Mm-hmm. I heard that uh, no one was allowed to talk to him when he wasn't filming. Well, um, that's one thing that uh, I, 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 I don't know about. Uh, anybody else, but I know that he was always very nice to me. Mm-hmm. He was always very, very cordial and very, uh, very nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure if he if he if he didn't allow anyone to talk to him, it was only because he was trying to you know stay in character the whole time. Yeah, you know, like a lot of those guys do. I think I think so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Any memories of playing the pharmacist in the Blob? I remember that uh, uh, I was with uh, I was with a, a bunch of guys uh, who uh, we went down to to New Orleans to um, uh, the parish uh, we were in uh, oh God I, I forget the name of the parish mm-hmm. but we were we were down there Abbeville Abbeville Louisiana. Mm-hmm. Abbeville. Abbeville Parish. And um, that's where we shot it. Uh, we shot the, all the exterior stuff. And then we came back to Hollywood. And in a sound stage, we shot like for seven weeks, six or seven weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, all the other stuff. Yeah. Did you like the original with Steve McQueen? I like the original a lot. Um, I was grateful that I had a chance to do the part, but I was grateful also that uh, uh, Steve McQueen had started it off. 
know? <laughs> yeah. And, um, Chuck Russell, he must have been great to work with. Chuck Russell was a great guy. He was he was really a nice guy, a very nice man. Underrated genius too, I think. Yeah, yeah. Probably probably one of your most memorable roles of your career is probably Chick Gandel in Field of Dreams. Oh yeah. How how did you get cast in that? Well, I got cast in that by I uh, I was told that, well, you know, when I uh, auditioned for the part and I got the part, uh, I then, they wanted me to come over and, re, re, you know, try some baseball stuff mm -hmm. uh, to try out for the baseball part. And so I came over to a, a park uh, where they had um, the, uh, you know, the Don Buford and uh, the other, uh, uh, guys who were the, uh, you know, the, um, the, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, Empires? The, well, not the Empires, but they were the, uh, consultants for the show. Oh, okay. The consultants. And, and, uh, I went in, and I went, in, and they said, we, we, we had a big meeting on, on the, on the pitcher's mound. And uh, they said, go to a, a base or an uh, outfield, wherever you are comfortable with, and we'll shoot you a few ground balls. So I went, I went to first base because that's where I had uh, last played softball. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, uh, they hit me a ground ball, and I stepped on first and, you know, did through at the second base and all that and they were very very nice of me and uh then i uh then i stood to stood to the side as the other guy that ran ran over to first base with me uh, i said well this is my competition and uh mm -hmm. he ran over and um they hit him a ground ball and he didn't he didn't know how to throw he, he, he had never played baseball before, mm -hmm. and I had played baseball a lot, and so uh, I got the job. <laughs> wow. You've been in a lot of movies and TV shows that have to do with baseball. Did you want to be a pro when you were younger? Well, I didn't, I didn't want to be a pro necessarily, um, although that would have been, been nice, but I didn't want to be a pro. I... Uh, just, uh, you know, when they sh showed me how to, to play, I played football in college. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they showed me how to, to, to uh, play first base and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a great time doing it. But I had already been a jock, you know what I mean? Yeah. I played football in high school too. I was a linebacker. Yeah. What did you play? Yeah. I played I played guard and linebacker in high school, mm -hmm. and uh, and some tackle, and then I uh, played the same thing in uh, at University of Kentucky. Oh, nice, nice. They're very hardcore about football in the South. Yeah, they are. Mm -hmm. yeah. You did a, a very good episode of Tales from the Crypt. How was that experience? The experience was great because uh, the uh, the lead in the, in the show, the leads in the show, the the guy and the girl were were, were really um, wonderful to me. Mm -hmm. They were very very nice, and so I uh, had a good time doing it. Mm -hmm. Christopher Reeve, uh, that was just before his accident. Yeah. And, um, I, I was glad to get to know him a little bit before he, he had his accident. You know. Yeah. Did, did, uh, do you think? Do you think um, when, after he had his accident, he changed much? Um, I didn't see him after that. I only saw him during the shooting of the show. Mm -hmm. So after he had had his accident, 
I didn't see him, so I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, also meet- I assume I assume he he uh, stayed. His personality stayed the same. Yeah. I mean, he was such a brave man. He really was Superman. Yeah, he was. He also worked with Meatloaf and Judd Nelson in that episode. Mm-hmm. Bess Armstrong. Yeah. Oh, she's talented. Yeah. That was a great cast. Do you get recognized um, for playing Babe Ruth in the Sandlot as much as you do for Field of Dreams? Well, I, I, I get recognized more for the Sandlot than I do for Field of Dreams. Really? Um, oddly enough. Uh, I was at a baseball game one time a few years ago, and uh, a kid was, was standing right next to me mm-hmm. um, in, in the aisle, and he said, can I have your autograph? And I said, sure. So I gave him an autograph, and then I looked back, and there was a whole string of, of people who were getting an autograph from me for wow. if it was for... Um, not feel the dreams, but for the Sandlot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that movie has just gotten such a huge cult following as much as Stand By Me does. It's 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 profound. Because I thought when I was a kid, it was just going to be one of those, you know, baseball-themed movies that faded away. But everyone, you know, to this day still loves it. Yeah. It's such a great movie. And I watched your scene last night uh, again, and I was like, God, that's just, it's such a a nice little powerful scene. And I love that, um, that black and white kind of animation they put over you when, you know, when you first get there and then when you go back into the closet and leave. Yeah. Yeah. That was very, very nice. And I say the, uh, the thing about, uh, you know, heroes get remembered, but he put legends never quit. Mm-hmm. Never die. Never die. That's a, Great saying. Uh, yeah, it was. Great saying. How did you get to play the Tooth Fairy in the Santa Claus 2? Well, I had done uh, a, uh, an episode of um, Man of the House uh, mm-hmm. with uh, Tim Tom, with uh, Tim... Um, Allen? Uh, Tim Allen. Oh, that's Home Improvement. And, yeah. Yeah. And... and uh, he was. He remembered me for that, and uh, well, I was called by the, on the phone, and I just uh, was offered the part. And I thought, well, I'll read the script first. So I said, send me a script, and they said they sent me a script. And um, the um, the um, it said he had little wings. He had tiny little wings on his on his on his back. Mm-hmm. He played football, but he had tiny little wings on his back. And I thought, it's, it's perfect for me. Yeah. So that's why I did it. It was hilarious. I was just, I was not expecting you to, to, to see you play that, the, the Tooth Fairy. <laughs> yeah. When I first saw it, I thought it was hilarious. Yeah. So, so when did you start uh, teaching acting? Well, I started teaching acting just a couple of years ago. I took a, a, a couple of lessons from um, a guy who is very, very close to to, to me here, mm-hmm. and uh, um, that was it. You like teaching? I like it a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You get? Do you get a satisfaction from it that you don't get from acting, or is it just you know both? Well, I um, I like to give back what I found, and what I found out was that if you are telling the truth, you are sincere and into the role. And if you're into the role uh, enough, you tell the truth, and mm-hmm. that's what I like to do. And do you agree that when you're teaching? You actually teach yourself as well as the students. Yeah, I do. Yeah, you. I do. You realize that um, you you know stuff that you didn't realize you knew. Yeah. Well, and um, when I uh, when I did the um, the uh, 
uh, the um, the uh, teaching. Mm-hmm. I, um, I I I learned a lot from just and, and it, it always surprised me as to how much I knew. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And so it was really, really good that way. Ah, that's great. Do you have any yeah. do you have any upcoming roles or convention appearances you'd like to plug? Well, I'd like to um I, I like to plug the uh the Hollywood um show that is, is out near the airport at LAX um this coming weekend and I'll be there uh with one of the other guys. Um Steve Easton from who played the pitcher in Field of Dreams, mm-hmm. and I'll be there with him. And and uh, not only will I be uh, seeing him, but I will always be with him uh, at the show. And uh, it's going to be Friday and Saturday, I believe. Mm-hmm. And this Friday and Saturday, and uh, that's it. Uh, great. My, my next interview is Kay Callen, who is also going to be at the Hollywood show this weekend. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. I, I I actually got to meet you a couple of years ago at Monster Palooza. Oh, you did? Yeah. I, I came over and talked to you a, a little bit. Um, I, was, I remember that. I remember that now. Yeah. You do? <laughs> I do. Uh, it's, it's, it's great to be remembered because I'll tell you, a lot of people that I either interview or, or or meet one time don't remember me, but I'm very glad that you remembered me. I remember you exactly, exactly. <laughs> and I remember what we talked about. Really? <laughs> which was basically uh, basically um, what what I had been doing lately, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I remember I saw you I was, when I was in line earlier that day to get in and stuff. I remember I saw you walking around and you were, you had this look on your face of urgency, like, God, I hope no one recognizes me. And someone did. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. That's, that's finally, uh, that finally happened. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, uh, I hope you have a great time at the Hollywood show this weekend. Maybe I'll see you again at another convention in the future. And I hope so too. This was an amazing honor. Thank you so much, Art. I hope you... Uh, you're welcome. I, I, I wish you nothing but the best of luck and in, in, in everything, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you very much. I appreciate it very much. Um, and I hope to see you soon. Absolutely. And ha- happy holidays. Okay. Same to you. Okay. Happy holidays. Okay. Hey, thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, there you have it. Art LaFleury. Ain't he a cool dude? Yes, Art is a very nice man and has great stories. And he's not as intimidating as a lot of his characters are. Um, If you like this video, everyone, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Add me as a friend on Facebook. Join my Tommy Kovac Comedian page on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and all that fun stuff. Well, that's all the time we have this week on... Splat from the past. Until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying, there's no shame in living in the past because the present sucks. Later, dudes!